do the club a power of good. Oh, Gary brings a new dimension. He's a, a footballer. We're hoping for great things from Gary. Um, if he can get on the spikes, I'm sure he could fight for that Welsh place. He's got all the football in the world. When you play rugby, you must react to certain situations in the game. And I think this, he has the ability to read the situation and either A, to put it, you know, to pass, kick, or to take them on. And I think that he has this innate ability. Considering the conditions, I think uh, we played quite well. First half, uh, against the wind, uh, I think we defended well, and when we had the chance, we moved the ball as much as we could. That sort of play from Finethley's new outside half kept the Glasgow defence on their toes. But two penalties from fullback John Brown, won a huge downwind effort from well inside his own half, still gave the Scots a 6-0 lead. That began to change, though, when Finethley skipper Phil May crashed over. And things were going pretty well behind the scrum, too. What about this new partnership with Mark Douglas? How do you find you're hitting it off with him? Well, me and Mark spent a lot of time in our school, in our school rugby together. And obviously, we played four years in youth as well, so uh, we know each other quite well. And I don't think uh, there's a lot of difference. You know, very similar to scrum off house enough. You really check him, you got him. Yeah, he got that try very well today, didn't he? Very much like... Oh, once he, gets, once he gets in his mind to uh, go forward, there's not a lot of things solid. Douglas's try then converted by Pierce himself. And apart from the fly half, Colin Donovan, another newcomer, was also showing his paces. Yes, he had some delightful runs. Uh, again, we're hoping that he can sort of finish off some of our moves. Counter-attacking or just playing a fluent game, I think, is based on the players just having the right attitude, the confidence to do it. And at the end there, I was very pleased to see them running out of the defence. You mentioned Colin Donovan's pace. A couple of times out there, he seemed to lack that little bit of confidence at the end to finish it off, didn't he? Well, I think uh, coming into a new club, possibly, a bit apprehensive, possibly. But out in Canada, he showed his pace. He showed some delightful touches. Up in a marvellous set of backs now then, but I thought David Pickering played very well out there as well. Well, he's a fine footballer. Yeah, he's second to none in Wales as a, <coughs> excuse me, as a, as a footballer. Um, again, this is something that, if you're going to develop the game, I think, the wing forwards must be on hand to take the game on further. And I think, again, Dyke Pickering is a, a perfect um, man to do this. He's a fine footballer. That was a marvellous break he made when he set up Peter Hopkins, wasn't it? Yes, it try. was. Yes. Uh, again, Gary just popped it up to uh, Dyke Pickering, who then went through with pace and again had a football to put the ball to Peter Hopkins. From the score. A fine try for Hopkins. And a little later, there was to be a score for David Pickering himself after Gary Pearce had once again opened up the way to the Glasgow goal line. The Scots were reeling now as Flanethley eased their way towards a 35-6 win. And a neat blindside move sent Peter Hopkins in for a second touchdown. Even so, it was still Pearce who mostly caught the eye, 11 points with the boot and some fine running. You must have been quite pleased with your own performance because you showed some smashing flashes there in midfield, didn't you? Well, it's always games like this when the grounds are hard that uh, I think suit me better than when, uh, when Christmas comes in the mud. Are you hoping to play a different type of game now that you've moved from Bridgen? I don't think so. I think uh, Bridgen and, Le and Lethley are very much similar in their style of play. Uh, they both like to run the ball as much as possible, so I don't think there's going to be a lot of difference. They all want the ball, so uh, this makes my job much easier if I got some good footballers outside with the game or Several of them, in fact, involved in the game's best try. I say, when you're a couple of points up, it's always much easier to run the ball. And uh, Ty Nick picked it up and he put it out to me, and there was a bit of room, so we, uh, we just, I just ran down the distance and gave it a call in and support it, and just flicked the pass under Kelly Turner. He did well to keep up with Colin, in fact, because Colin done is very quick, isn't he? Ah, oh, I wouldn't say uh, I kept up with him, but I think Colin uh, slowed down for me. For Kerry Townley, a superb try. But what about a Welsh recall for Gary Pearce? I hope so. But, uh, I say I'm only 22 and I'm improving. But well, I'm looking to, uh, to improve anyway. And uh, I hope my time at Clarethy will uh, push me a little bit closer to getting back in the world side. Meanwhile, for Alan Lewis, the hopes of another successful season at Stradi. Well, hopefully it's, it's early days yet. You know, hopefully we have to develop um, a far more powerful front five. You have to work hard with them in order to, to compete to the Cardiffs and Swansea's and Bonapools. But hopefully things may come. A desperately close run thing. Oh, uh, you can say it again, but uh, I got under it a little bit because uh, the pressure, the, the scrum disrupted uh, Cardiff, of course, with this great scrummage power. They disrupted a uh, scrum a little bit, and the ball came back with hard work with uh, Jonathan from uh, pressure. And we, I got it, and uh, I got under it a little bit because 
leave it up so quick and it took a bit of time getting over but I think you know, all the traffic supporters there were uh, going to be a bit of a blow behind it and I think all the players were as well. I can't really remember to be honest but I just got up as he went over. Uh, wonderful, best I've ever seen. Had you had a word with Gary and told him to have a go at that? Or oh, was he it? didn't listen to me anyways, up to him. <laughs> <laughs> In fairness, we didn't play that well. We were never allowed to get going and uh, full credit to the on the day they played very well. What do you think went wrong from Carly's point of view then? Well, we never seemed to get going. Uh, we didn't. We want to load the scrimmage for one reason or other, and uh, we decided to keep it tight uh, early on. But we were never allowed to. Uh, Glen Ashley didn't allow us to keep it tight, and they played very well. The tackling was superb, and as I say, we want to load the scrimmage for one reason or another. I don't think you can plan for cup finals. Uh, you know, the occasion is so great, and uh, the pressure is so great. Uh, I think you just got to take out the flow. We planned to run any good ball we want. But we weren't prepared to run bad ball, and as it happened, it, pr it proved good for us. Did the Cardiff team approach the game as you thought they would? Yes, basically. Uh, they came at us from the close to set pieces and close to loose ball. And uh, I thought our back row defence and midfield were terrific and knocked them back. It's bitterly disappointing because you've had such a marvellous season, played such marvellous rugby all the way through, haven't That's you? That's right, it's very disappointing to lose a cup final, whatever type of season you had, but uh, especially the season we've had. But full credit to our boys, you know, um, we stuck out there without playing too well today and uh, we still in with a shout towards the end. But Just looking back at the game, you were 6-3 up at half time with Garth Davis kicking the cup of penalties. He was off target a few times as well, wasn't that pretty crucial in those days? Yeah, I suppose so, looking back, but rugby's all about scoring tries and uh, perhaps we didn't make full use of the possession we had. It's easy to... Um, criticise a goal kicker but uh, in the same breath Gareth have won this many games this season and uh, that's the way they go sometimes they go over sometimes they don't first half we decided to play against the wind we had three points into the wind which were vital really uh, and second half uh, we thought we'd just get it down there put up to get a bit of pressure on and then that try from Jonathan Griffith really set the game alight didn't it yeah it seemed to come alive I think it was a bit tense before that you know uh, a few petty penalties which uh, really because we played against the wind first half could have cost us Fortunately, at 6 3 with the wind behind us, we were still in it after. What about that try by Jonathan? Did you see much of it? Yeah, it's a great try. Uh, <coughs> won a good ruck, I think, on the right. And uh, we had a couple of men over, and Johnny went strongly for it. Strong ball. What about the Fenetti supporters? They certainly made I was going to come on to that myself. It was just magnificent. Uh, all the three finals I played in, certainly the best support. And uh, the, th the people come up from Fenetti were absolutely magnificent today. They, uh, they took us along with us, with them in the second half, and to see them all from uh, from the top there it was magnificent. Let's talk about the tries you did score. The first one that put you back in the lead, uh, Alan Phillips. He did marvellously well to reach the line, didn't he? That's right. I think he's suffering from a bit of concussion. He didn't know really where he was, what he was doing, but uh, he was very quick for a hooker, and he did marvellously well to make the line for us. It was a crucial point. And the second one also did a crucial point because that put you back in the lead. It was a lovely little grubber from David Evans, wasn't it? That's right. Uh, he, he played all his rugby at South Africa. He did a marvellous job in the centre first today. And uh, it was a good, perhaps a bit of, of a play from an outside half that made a try for Daniel Cordell. We showed yeah. a tremendous amount of pace together. As long as there's two points, you know, you, you can get back. Uh, but with a side as strong as Cardiff, I think they can tighten it up a little, little bit if they get. Uh, about three or four points away, so uh, we managed to keep pegging at them. Yes, after uh, Fenethi did uh, get that last minute lead, uh, injury time needed to drop goal, Gareth Davis had a pop. He was only just wide, wasn't he? Yeah, but uh, it's no good crying over spilt milk. And uh, Gareth had a good end, and uh, I think Al Phil Davis charged it down and did very well to get the uh, other I think perhaps I might have gone through the post, and uh, that's what it was all about. Uh. I don't like to lose, and most of our boys are not good losers because it's uh, rugby's all about winning and, and enjoyment. But uh, when you get to a final, you want to win, and we were very disappointed. But that disappointment's over now. Congratulations to Lan Ethley on a marvellous victory. And we'll just go out and enjoy ourselves tonight. Over the next couple of years, I think Clethley will be one of the top sides, like the 70s. And uh, it's taking time, but uh, I think the coaches have got it right. And uh, I think we can, only, we can only get better. Just one more thing from young friend to be a man of the match today. I mean, that must be very satisfying. Well, yes, uh, it's uh, obviously an individual uh, thing, but uh, going back to the side again, you know, it wasn't just me playing there, it's 15 of us, and, uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's not for me, it's for the 15, I think. In soccer, it was the Houdini. In a few minutes, we're going to be seeing and hearing about events at this particular function at the Crest Hotel in Cardiff. Now, certainly in the room, there are rugby players from the past and from the present day, 
But this is really a media occasion. This is the annual supper of the Welsh Rugby Writers Association. It's when we all get out this rather lurid-looking tie. And, of course, the rugby writers are the people who report the game and broadcast on it and try to keep their fingers on the pulse of rugby in Wales, see how it is evolving and progressing. At this event, his colleagues remember Lloyd Lewis of the News of the World and TWW killed in an air crash some years back after covering a match in Paris. And a trophy named after him is presented to the player chosen by the rugby writers as man of the match at the Schweppes Cup final. This year, the cup went to Llanelli by 15 points to 14 over defending holders Cardiff. And Gary Pearce knocked up 11 points, which included the decisive drop goal near the close of the game. So during an evening when people are mostly off duty, enjoying friendship in an informal setting, the one formal moment is the presentation of the Lloyd Lewis Trophy to the Senesley standoff half by the man who won it last year, Neath Scrum half, Gareth Jones. I'd just like to thank the rugby writers for once again inviting me along to this duel, this time to present the trophy last year to receive it, but I'd like to call on Gary to come along now and receive the trophy of the Lloyd Lewis Memorial for his rugby performance in last year. I don't think it was the only thing I've noticed. I'm sorry if I didn't say anyone, but I'm sorry, I'm going to leave it with Sandra. I'd just like to thank the Welsh Rugby Writers for coming with me in the match. I honestly don't believe I deserved it. The drop goal, it's just one of those things. In a few minutes, we're going to be seeing and hearing about events at this particular function at the Crest Hotel in Cardiff. Now, certainly in the room, there are rugby players from the past and from the present day, but this is really a media occasion. This is the annual supper of the Welsh Rugby Writers Association. It's when we all get out this rather lurid-looking tie. And, of course, the rugby writers are the people who report the game and broadcast on it and try to keep their fingers on the pulse of rugby in Wales, see how it is evolving and progressing. At this event, his colleagues remember Lloyd Lewis of the News of the World and TWW killed in an air crash some years back after covering a match in Paris. And a trophy named after him is presented to the player chosen by the rugby writers as man of the match at the Schweppes Cup final. This year, the cup went to Llanelli by 15 points to 14 over defending holders Cardiff. And Gary Pearce knocked up 11 points, which included the decisive drop goal near the close of the game. So during an evening when people are mostly off duty, enjoying friendship in an informal setting, the one formal moment is the presentation of the Lloyd Lewis Trophy to a Llanelli standoff half by the man who won it last year, Neath Scrum half, Gareth Jones. I'd just like to thank the rugby writers for once again inviting me along to this duel, this time to present the trophy last year to receive it, but I'd like to call on Gary to come along now and receive the trophy of the Lloyd Lewis Memorial for his rugby yeah, yeah. performance in last year. I don't think it was the only thing I noticed. I'm sorry if I didn't say anyone, but uh, I'm sorry, just, I'm going to leave it with Sandra. I'd just like to thank uh, the Welsh Rugby Writers uh, for coming with me in the, the Manor Lodge. I honestly don't believe I deserved it. The uh, drop goal, uh, well, it's just one of those things. I like to play 50 man rugby, and I think uh, if they stick out, I'm sure they will uh, have some good results this year. Obviously, Billy's got a big influence on the side as coach, and uh, hopefully, they'll carry on out. Once the points started to come for Llanelli, they came in a, a real rush, didn't they? Yeah, as I say, when, when we managed to score a few points first half, so obviously we were quite confident uh, going into the second half with the wind. And uh, I think once we started to get a bit of confidence ourselves, I think uh, we tried a few more things and they seemed to come off at us, which is uh, a good thing. Well, Llanelli's first try came from wing forward Anthony Griffiths, who could well find himself with an important part to play at Straddy now that Alan Davis has decided to retire. Phil Davis is still very much around, though, and when he picked up the second, the Scarlets were on their way, in spite of fielding a very young team that included only seven of last season's cup-winning side. 
it's credit to the club that they got good youngsters coming through, I guess. I'm sure if they stick at it, uh, they'll be pushing for the first team place right now. It's just the sort of rugby they love to see down here at Stradley, isn't it? Uh, the moves you were making in the second half. Well, they got such a good side in the 70s that uh, the crowd sort of expected every game, you know. And uh, if I kick it more than uh, three or four times, they start they let you know, all right? And uh, well, I think uh, we we base our rugby on 50 miles and can roll to the wings as often as we can. Anyway. And uh, I think the crowd enjoyed it, and also as players, we enjoy it. Martin Gravel certainly enjoyed himself on Saturday, and by the time the fullback crossed for this touchdown. It was pretty clear that Pontypridd were in for a bit of a pounding. They did manage one consolation try when a handy bounce gave John Hadley, brother of Welsh winger Adrian, the chance to make the corner. Gary Pierce couldn't quite keep him out there, but the outside half really was looking right on top of his game after spending the summer down under. Well, I obviously went to Australia uh, to come back a lot fitter and uh, hopefully a lot sharper. And, uh, I think I've uh, achieved that, and hopefully you now it's uh, I'll go for the season. And you certainly look sharp today. I mean, your try you had to show a lot of pace to get to the line. That time, didn't you? I was looking for yeah, yeah. And I, after I received the ball, but uh, no, it's just uh, I think if you, you know, obviously you now I am a, a little bit fitter and obviously a bit sharper, and uh, I think you will see me get to positions that sometimes you won't get to. And this happened when I got in a position when I received the ball back off Martin and I had a gap and I just kept running. And not a bad start today. 17 points first match of the season. No, it's good, you know, it's nice to score points at uh, Albany, but uh, I'm looking forward to this year. I missed the record last year by a few points, having to go to Australia, and uh, hopefully I'm going to go for this year. So. What about the Stan Effie side, and obviously the, the cup final success is a marvellous thing for the club. Can you build on that and become one of the top teams in Welsh Rugby Week in that week out, do you think? Well, I, I don't see why not. We've got enough good uh, players. I think all, we've always struggled up front uh, in the two years I've been here, but uh, I think halfway through last year we had a few players join us, and uh, I'm sure our pack are getting a good pack now, and we're having a lot more ball, and hopefully we can go on from here. But from last season, you know, we sort of came good after the Australian game, and let's hope we've, uh, we're the youngsters are coming through now. We'll push sort of the, the older players to work a bit harder, and therefore we can only get better, I think. When Pierce sent Yayan Evans racing through for yet another try, the match had become something of a massacre. Hunterfield's coach had broken down on the way to Stradley, and by now the visitors must have had very mixed feelings about getting to the ground at all. Gary Pierce then sent up replacement Peter Hopkins to round off a very impressive display by the Scarlets. And he feels that sort of team performance can only help him as he tries to force his way back into the international picture. No one looks at a, a beaten side. I want to say if you, if you win every week, not only myself, but all the players in the side will sort of have to be recognised sometime or other. You know, it's just a case of getting out there and doing a job every week. Well, yesterday morning, Cardiff at Newport in a sort of sporting clash of the titans, and at Swansea, what should be a real running battle between Llanelli and Bridgend, a game which has a story all of its very own. Llanelli against Australia at Straddy, with the Scarlets out to beat the Wallabies all over again, and they did it too, on a day when Gary Pearce clinched the game after a mix-up in the tourist defence. Not the greatest try he's ever scored, perhaps, but certainly one of the most important. And one to remember when Gary's not out there as Llanethley's outside half, but back inside his office in the town centre. His customers know him as managing director of Cleanshine, an industrial cleaning firm. But rugby fans still think back to the times when he did so well for another club, the team he and his side take on in tomorrow's semi-final, Bridgen. Well, I wouldn't say we're confident, but we're looking forward to it. Uh, obviously, uh, the way things look, uh, we, we are favourites, but uh, I don't think anyone is favourite for the semi-final. Does it mean something special to you to be playing against Bridgend after all the marvellous years you had there? Well, I wouldn't say it's special, it's special to be in the semi-final, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, obviously, I had good times at Bridgend and I uh, enjoyed it there. And now I'm with Nathalie, uh, I'm equally, equally enjoying it. You know, uh, I just mm -hmm. hope that, uh, that we beat them, really. You must have marvellous memories of the Cup with Bridgend, the three Cup finals, uh, some tremendous Cup runs. Always a great Cup side when you were there. Yes, I was lucky. I went to Bridgend. Uh, only uh, 18 and I went into a side that were really playing well and uh, it was like I was just chucked in there and they all did it for me but uh, now I've been on a little bit uh, I think I can add a few things to uh, to a game and uh, just hope that things go well. Why do you think it is that Bridgend have done well in cups over the years? So they seem to be a good cup side, don't they? I don't know, it's, uh, it's very similar to Clarity, you know, Clarity can be losing four or five games and all of a sudden they can be, uh, they'll win the big game, you know. Uh, Bridgend are capable of raising the game. They play good rugby, open rugby, 
and uh, they're, they're, they're all good footballers, you know, so therefore you can't afford to give them a chance. Because you've been at Llanelli two years now, do you feel you're very much settled in here? Yes, I think I'm uh, settled now. Uh, I've settled in with rugby and the work locally as well. You know, everything's come together nice. So you're pleased with the way the moves worked out then? Yes, uh, excellent. Uh, I just hope now, uh, if we get to the final on Saturday, then uh, it'll improve it all. Do you think your own game has developed at all since you have made the move? Uh, I think Bridgen play a very similar type of uh, rugby to Natalie. They, they move the ball very quickly to the wings and support the wingers. And obviously, it helps me. Uh, that's the way I like to play rugby. And uh, I think the two sides are similar, so it's made it easy for me. Do you think you're playing for the right side on Saturday? Well, let's hope so, anyway. Uh, the way things are at the moment, uh, I'd rather be on the athletic side than the Bridgen side. Who's here if he's right?